Hey guys, how are you all doing today? We have finally made it to Friday, finishing a very exhausting week. We have some important developments happen today that I want to share with you guys. Going from Evergrande all the way to crypto, Chinese is definitely betting on bolstering itself as a more powerful and competitive entity than ever before. We are going to keep it super light on content today since it's Friday and I want you guys to go into the weekend all fresh up but relaxed, so sit back and let me Tokyo drift through these segments and well get through all of this as soon as possible. Let me quickly disclose and state that I am not a financial analyst or advisor, and that all contents discussed in this video are provided as opinions. All efforts are placed to better understand the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Everything presented is evidence I collect, and all opinions are based on research, experience and knowledge on the matter. Shout out to all my Patreons and one-time donors, whose contributions continue to carry this channel forward. Thank you so much to all that have taken a moment in the burden of throwing some love my way, it means a great deal for the longevity of the channel. You guys are the absolute best. Let's get started. First and foremost, China announced today that they would be cracking down on cryptocurrencies, as their central bank, regulators and Supreme Court declared all crypto-related transactions illegal. This is the harshest crackdown the country has imposed on crypto, with them already having placed many measures to try to constrain crypto trading. China understands that people are getting smarter, and that it is almost impossible to ban crypto. Their recent measures target over-the-counter crypto services, crypto derivatives exchanges and offshore crypto exchanges that may have business or operations in the country. But something very noticeable happened. Every time China cracks down on crypto, the market's reaction with a price drop is effectively smaller and more short-lived. In fact, it has become so noticeable that trading strategies have formed around this phenomenon. It is implied that our more crackdowns keep on happening, and the consequential price dips take place, the reaction of the market will shift from selling to buying more in anticipation. This is a huge indicator that the demand for cryptocurrencies is growing at a global basis. That is not to say that China's recent crackdown will not affect global distribution. What does this have to do with GameStop and AMC you might ask? Well, aside from the fact that the major banks and hedge funds shortening the squeeze have been increasingly parking their cash on crypto, we also know that overall exposure is affected by these things. Unfortunately, because they don't share these types of numbers, I cannot say exactly how companies like Citadel or Virtue are reacting, but we have seen them withdrawing large chunks of money from crypto in the recent couple of months. We have theorized that the reason for this has been to account for potential margin calls. Remember guys, everything in the market is connected. We cannot just look at GameStop or at AMC as being totally independent from what is happening because the forces that press on these stocks are directly influenced by what happens in the housing market or in China or in crypto. Yeah, AMC and GME might be divorced from direct market directions to certain degrees, but the institutions holding them back aren't, so it is important to cover all bases. Talking about covering bases, Credit Suisse dumped Evergrande exposed last year according to new reports coming from the Financial Times. They sold down their entire exposure to protect the Swiss bank from significant losses if the world's indebted developer defaults. Credit Suisse's past relationship with Evergrande comes at a difficult time indeed, accounting for the fact that they are facing very angry investors themselves and plenty of lawsuits over the billions of dollars that they lost after the closure of $10 billion worth of funds. Their new chair has been overhauling their risk management systems and reviewing client relationships after another $5.5 billion trading loss after the failure of Archegos Capital. The other day we talked about Evergrande's board requesting their own employees to take on financial debt so that they could loan it out for the company. It is why there are so many employees also taking part in the protests. I talked about some people accounting for being about $60,000 in debt which the company seems unable to pay them back. Reports starting coming out today with a rather morbid reality of what the Evergrande chairman pocketed throughout this financial crisis. New investigations into the chairman revealed that he continued to fill his pockets with dividends while his company kept racking up enormous debt. He has apparently received a total of $8 billion from cash dividends. On March of this year, his total net worth was around $27.7 billion according to Forbes. You see what I mean guys? They literally have so many assets and money to sell off, but they will rather put their employees against the sword in the wall and force them into going into debt so that they don't have to shell out cash. They even had the audacity to keep some of that money that their workers loaned them after lying to them that they would be paid back. 
I hope the Chinese government makes a public example out of each and every single one of these guys. Lastly, Evergrande's global bondholders did not receive interest payments. Evergrande was on the hook to pay $83.5 million by September 23rd, which was yesterday. The company does have a 30-day grace period before bondholders can call it a default. The stage is set for what will become the largest ever dollar bond default by a company in Asia if Evergrande doesn't meet the deadline in this 30-day grace period. The problem with Evergrande is that they have very serious liquidity problems, and with investors selling the stocks in conjunction with the government not bailing them out and banks being unwilling to lend them money, they are not doing all that well when it comes to planning and executing a provision to pay off its investors. I will continue monitoring and updating you guys on the situation. Let's talk about today. The Fed reported that reverse repo operations for today resulted in over $1.313 trillion, a slight decrease over yesterday's operations. AMC's dark pool transactions accounted for 61% of the total volume, while GameStop dark pool transactions accounted for 37% of the total volume today. According to Fidelity data, buy order flow for AMC was bigger than the sell order flow, with GameStop's buy order flow being over three times as big as the sell order flow. Now, let us finish up with a recap of today's performance. AMC traded bearishly, bullishly, gaining less than 1%. It was able to close above $40.01, so that is great for people with expiring options. It began trading on the pre-market with a substantial dip. It would then start to make higher highs and have higher lows all the way into market opening. AMC was then dipped again below 39.30 before bouncing back and eventually reaching 40.50. AMC would then retrace a bit before closing at 40.01 above the VWAP. Great job to everyone that bought the dip and held through the day. As for what I expect next week, I will make a video on Sunday talking about it. GameStop traded bearishly, losing over 3% today. My baby was heavily shorter today, and looking at the graph is obvious that the stock was targeted today. From the moment the stock market opened, AMC traded bearishly all the way until it closed in almost a perfect textbook pattern. There is really not a lot to be said. GameStop closed at 185.16, well below the VWAP. I personally bought that dip below 185 so I am super happy about it. Thank you so much for the discount Kenny. As for what I expect next week, like I said, I will make a video on Sunday talking about it. And that is all I have for you guys today. Today's big question is, what is the one thing you wish to accomplish before you die? Can't wait to go through your responses. If you want to help this channel, I have provided links which will be in the description for donations or even a monthly pledge of whatever amount you want. These donations do go a long way in helping me be able to pump videos out. Remember to follow me on Twitter if you haven't already and I hope to see you guys on the next one. And that is all I have for you. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Go to the movies or go to the beach. Have fun and decompress so that you can come back strong next week.